Okay guys, in today's video I'm going to go over how to use a duplexer uh, and two antennas at the same time. Um, although I know the first thing that comes to mind is the whole purpose of a duplexer is to be able to use one antenna um, and I get that totally but uh, uh, I've been working on an issue of being able to do vehicular in-band repeating and uh, we have uh, 100 watt radios and that's um, to get a, a 100 watt duplexer is very expensive and large and uh, not not uh, you know inclined to a mobile world uh, they're not meant to be banged around at all um, so uh, I, I, I did a, a previous video before about um, using some uh, uh, tomb stubs to to kind of do a, a, a similar thing but honestly those were kind of Mickey Mouse and in and, and, and it worked but it greatly reduced the uh, the effective receive uh, with uh, um, that setup um, so um, I just had uh, you know like a uh, a brainstorm and um, it was because I saw on the internet that they were selling these little um, uh, mobile duplexers, these little band reject duplexers that I've used uh, a lot over the years, but they were selling for like $85. I was like, there's no way. Um, brand new. And uh, I just couldn't believe it. So I, I ordered one and... Uh, and I, I was going through different ideas of how I was going to implement it with a low power, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then finally, it, it hit me that for a mobile application, throwing up a second antenna is nothing. It's not like we're on a tower where you have to have incredible vertical separation and it's going to be twice the money and uh, twice the contract and all those other things. Uh, on a mobile um throwing up a second antenna is um, uh, not a problem. So if I was able to use a second antenna and the duplexer at the same time, I could go with a whole lot low, lower power version of it and um, have uh, all the benefits of it. So in a normal situation, um, the transmitter here is... Um, uh, going through the duplexer and it loses some of its power before it gets to the antenna in this situation we're letting the transmitter go straight to the uh, uh, antenna and this is going to be a uh, and I'll show you in the next video here this is the uh, um, uh, the the radio that's permanently mounted in the truck and then this is a little kit that I put in a little case that I can just plug into the DB25 connector on the side here and, and sneak some power through a T, T adapter and uh, instantly turn it into a, a repeater. Um, but uh, yeah, the way it works is when the, the transmitter uh, uh, transmits here um, um, at, uh, uh, this will be at a low frequency 151. When it comes in, the band reject uh, rejects the 151 uh, transmitter frequency from going this way and forces all the power of it to go this way into the dummy load um, and correspondingly when the portables uh, 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 key up and they come into here on the receive frequency uh, they are rejected uh, from going to the dummy uh, load uh, completely and all of their power uh, goes into the receiver um, all the other um, uh, frequencies within that band um, have a weird uh, split where the power will go in both ways and it'll be a non 50 ohm situation for uh, those frequencies um, whereas uh, only the two tuned frequencies will have a, a true crisp 50 ohm response going one way or the other um, but yeah the, as far as I know this is a unique application I haven't I haven't seen anyone else do this um, yet uh, but I'm sure someone did I just um, haven't seen it or it wasn't documented but let me um, pull up the uh, details now of how exactly uh, this is done um, I'm starting here with uh, the standard uh, vehicle setup where you just have a 
um, you know, normal transceiver here, and it's uh, already got a quarter wave uh, uh, antenna on the roof installed. It's already hooked up uh, to the high current current source to the battery, and it's just sitting there ready to go. And this is how it normally is. Well, when you bring in the package, um, what you do is you, um, I come in here and um, let me shrink it up. There it is. And what I'm adding is I'm adding this in this little case, um, the uh, uh, the other receiver, and uh, this doesn't have to be a BK. It could actually be a, a, a Kenwood, um, which is the ones I want to concentrate on, or the Kenwoods, because um, um, uh, you're just using it as a receiver. Um, it doesn't really matter what it is, as long as you can get a um, a COR output, um, and uh, you know your discriminator audio here but um uh, anyway just come in you put uh you snap in the power for it with a t adapter i have a fan uh as well uh so that um to put on the heat sink of the of the vehicle radio just in case uh, uh people start talking um a lot and uh they they start pushing it so just go ahead and get the fan going to just to have all bases covered and um yeah, this is a situation where um, we're turning the uh, vehicle into an instant repeater on site so that the people in the field uh, in their portables, uh, they're going to transmit on 159.xx, um, whatever, you know, frequency assignment pairs that, you, uh, you know, your agency's been given. But um, you're going to tone guard it or NAT guard it, depending on whether you're digital or analog. And uh, basically, um, that that's going to be your control uh, mechanism for the repeater. And you'll come in um, on uh, 159 high uh, or low, depending. Like I said, it doesn't matter if you flip the flip the uh, the values. Um, but uh, in this case, we're coming in uh, on the portables 159 high with a PL that causes a um, an active low out here on the COR that then corresponds to a push to talk on the transmitter and um, we retransmit out at, uh, at 151. Um, this, uh, in, the, in the case here with the kit, you can either have like a mag mount or if they have a second quarter wave roof mount antenna that you can utilize. Or if, you, uh, if you're really dealing with a, some you know, large amount of portable situation, uh, I'd recommend getting a, a nice lightweight Yagi uh, a low power Yagi, and because um, it's going to just be receive only, but uh, put it on on a uh, nice pole, get it up high uh, to really uh, and point the, uh, obviously at the center of uh, action um, to help pull in all those um, weak weak uh, field signals coming in. With a hundred watts on your transmit, you're going to outperform uh, all the all the um, portables in the area by far so they'll essentially hear, hear clearly way beyond the, the area that they could uh, actually call back in on uh, so you're just giving overkill with your 100 watts to saturate the local area um, that's what you want anyway um, but um, anyway um, uh, I just wanted to give you a quick um, uh, uh, actual demonstration uh, in the vehicle so uh, stand by for that and uh, we'll go from there all right we're out here at the vehicle and uh, here's the two mobile set up uh, with a repeater configuration um, I have uh, on my right here this is the receive radio so we'll come out of the portable into the receive audio into the transmitter and then out uh, to the antenna Here's the uh, duplexer uh, with the dummy load on the uh, low side and the antenna connected and the receiver on the high side. If you look up here, uh, there's my two mobile antennas on top and uh, we got about two feet between them. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it's working well. There is the fan I have on top. Uh, I have the fuse unplugged right now because I'm not running it hard. But go ahead and key up the radio here. Testing one, two, three, four. And um, you can see.
see we get a uh, repeat action there. And I'm very, very happy with the performance of the uh, duplexer. The, the tuning of it was uh, the, the screws were a little, just a little flimsy, uh, not too bad. It, 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 it tuned up okay. It's kind of what you expect from $85 uh, a duplexer, but um, it works really well. So there's your uh, in-vehicle uh, repeater with duplexer and two antennas. All right, hope that helps, and we'll talk to you soon.